Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject failure analysis and prevention. Uh, in the previous presentation, we have talked about the importance of the failure analysis and some uh, major engineering disasters which have taken place uh, in the past and they underline the need of uh, the carrying out the failure analysis so that the suitable corrective action uh, can be taken. Uh, we know that whenever any failure of the mechanical components can uh, it takes place. Uh, then uh, we need to investigate it systematically so that the root causes of the failures can be identified in order to avoid the recurrence of the such kind of failures. So, uh, but for failure investigation in which direction we should go? So, say we uh, our the failure has taken place and it needs to be investigated in order to take the corrective action. So, what should be the directions in which investigation will be carried out? As you know, there uh, the failure analysis will involve systematic procedure uh, of investigation so that the root causes can be identified. But what will be those directions in which investigation need to be carried out? So, to understand, uh, to, uh, to have the idea about the directions in which failure analysis uh, need to be carried out, uh, we need to uh, understand the fundamental sources of failure, fundamental sources of failure of the mechanical component. So, these fundamental sources of the mechanic uh, failure of the mechanical component involve some of the bigger factors, deficiency in those factors or improper application of those uh, things lead to the failure. So, one is the improper design of the component. So, uh, we know that in light of the service conditions suitable parameters are used for designing the components so that they can perform during the service. But if there has been if uh, uh, in the design if there are deficiencies then it will lead to the failure of the component. Another important factor improper selection of the material although selection of the material is a part of the design itself, but sometimes the material selection if it is a not done properly, then despite of having the proper sizing of the material, uh, the material uh, degradation property, uh, degradation in properties of the material lead to the failure of the component. So, improper selection of material this is the another factor and material has to be selected in such a way uh, that uh, the foreseeable mechanism of the failure is considered for selection of the material and uh, accordingly suitable properties are considered for the design purpose. So, uh, the, the improper selection of the material is the second one, third one is the improper manufacturing being applied, improper manufacturing procedures being applied. Uh, like say uh, certain uh, procedural faults are there or the, uh, the so something has been specified in procedure, but something else is followed or carelessness on the part of the worker. So, there are various factors which are related with the improper manufacturing and which become the uh, uh, become the cause of the failure. Then another one improper assembly say uh, most of the engineering systems or mechanical systems are made of the number of components and all of them are assembled in a systematic way. But if the assembly is, a, is not proper, then it will lead to the imbalance misalignment and uh, which will lead to the uh, introduction of uh, unnecessary forces which can cause the failure of the components. So, improper assembly of the uh, system and then uh, we have like improper service conditions means uh, the, the the system uh, every system is designed to uh, work under certain conditions of service but if it is abused during the service like it is overloaded or subject to the lower temperature subject to the too higher temperature than what is expected then it will lead to the failure so improper service condition is the another factor. So, this is uh, uh, then we have uh, improper maintenance. Uh, every uh, the most of the mechanical systems having the relative movement 
so they need to be uh, properly lubricated in order to read uh, in order to have them in proper uh, uh, running conditions in order to reduce wear and friction um, and uh, the proper uh, anti corrosion paintings need to be done uh, so that uh, the corrosion uh, from the environmental conditions can be prevented so number of things need to be done for uh, maintaining the component in proper working conditions but if uh, the maintenance is not proper then it also it will lead to the uh, the failure so improper maintenance of the system can also lead to the failure there is one additional point related with the material like even if the material selection is correct even then failure of the material uh, failure of the mechanical component can take place and this is the situation when the imperfections in the material itself imperfections in the base metal itself like uh, for a particular application if uh, uh, the uh, simple carbon is steel like a AISI 1010 uh, steel is recommended and uh, it has been selected considering the service conditions but this is steel is having lot of inclusions or uh, this is steel is uh, the of the full of the uh, gases present here and there then these inclusions and the pores will act as a stress raisers uh, and uh, will also act as a site of the weakness where from cracks can easily nucleate and cause the failure of the component. Uh, despite of uh, proper, uh, proper design, proper selection of the material, proper manufacturing, but the base material itself is weak then it will lead to the premature failure of the component. So, these are the fundamental sources of the failure of the mechanical component. So, whenever any failure uh, uh, occurs uh, all these components need to be investigated and one by one possibility for each of the component is to be ruled out. So, we will be first investigating uh, in light of the service conditions whether design was perfect or not or whether whatever the material uh, was uh, selected the right kind of material was uh, actually used or not. So, material conformation and if there is any deficiency in the material itself like uh, posts or inclusions or um, cracks uh, then whatever recommended manufacturing process has been there that has been followed or not or were there any deficiencies uh, similarly whether the assembly procedure was correctly, correctly followed or not and similarly the, comp the conditions under which failure has taken uh, were corresponding to the conditions for which it was made or designed or not or it has been uh, abused uh, during the service. So, uh, all these components will be the suspect will be the suspected cause of the failure and each one needs to be investigated to rule out, uh, to rule out the possibility of the contribution uh, of the factors or to identify which of the factors would have contributed towards the failure whether uh, despite of everything uh, if uh, even if the everything is uh, perfectly fine but if the maintenance has been improper then it also can lead to the failure for example like uh, there is an automobile and if the incorrect kind of the lubricant is used then despite of the proper design of the piston cylinder crankshafts <coughs> proper material, proper uh, manufacturing, proper assembly and uh, normal uh, service conditions it can lead to the uh, seizure of the component or the failure of the, uh, the engine due to the uh, use of the improper lubricant. So, uh, every factor is significant and every factor can uh, lead to the failure. So, each one needs to be investigated for its possible contribution towards the failure. Uh, so, uh, now uh, we will see uh, the, the first uh, significant uh, uh, fundamental source of the failure which is the improper or the deficient the design of the component. We know that design basically of mechanical component involves the sizing and shaping identification of the size and shape of the component which needs to be manufactured considering the given service conditions like the load, temperature, uh, environment, uh, the type of load, velocities etcetera. So, service conditions are kept in mind while designing a, 
a component for determining the size and what kind of size and shape will be fit for proper uh, functioning and uh, uh, the proper life of the component. So, uh, but if uh, the sizing shaping uh, determination of this uh, aspect is not correct, uh, then it can lead to the failure and that failure comes up due to the various factors uh, with regard to the design of the uh, um, mechanical component. The first one uh, like the presence of the stress razors. This is one of the most common cause of the failure uh, due to the deficient design presence of the stress razors. Uh, uh, and this these stress razors of course will be causing the stress concentration and uh, increasing the um, uh, localization of the stresses and so localized failure will be triggered. Uh, the second factor I will elaborate each of the factors at length. Then second factor is about uh, the changing the design of the component without giving proper consideration to the various possibilities which can happen if the design is changed. So changing design of the component for a given service conditions without proper uh, considerations to the various factors and which can lead to the stress concentration overloading or exposure to the conditions for which uh, for what it has not been designed. So, uh, the change in design without proper considerations to the various possibilities related with the service conditions. Third one is like uh, uh, one particular component has been working fine for very long and it has a very good uh, uh, record of the service and, uh, and encouraged with that performance if we are upgrading the same for the different design uh, for a different uh, kind of the system then that can also lead to the failure. So, upgrading a product to the different service conditions which are like say more severe service conditions like something has been designed for the 10 uh, there is a nut and bolt assembly or there is washer or retainers or number of components which are there for the 10 HP engine and if uh, if uh, some of the components has been working very efficiently effectively for long without failure with this kind of system and then if uh, with encouraged with this performance of a particular item associated with the 10 HP engine, if the same is upgraded for the like say 15 HP engine, then it can lead to the failure of the component uh, much earlier than it what uh, uh, was stimulated, stipulated. So, uh, unnecessary upgradation of the certain parts without considering the uh, 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 without giving full thought to the various possibilities which can happen during the service under the more severe conditions, uh, it can lead to the failure. Uh, the, sec uh, the next one is, uh, is the uh, next factor is about the design developed without full knowledge of the stress conditions. Uh, so, this uh, one is like designing without proper assessment of service conditions. Without proper assessment of the service conditions. Uh, like uh, 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 sometimes it becomes difficult to identify what will be the maximum load, what will be the minimum load, what will be the temperature conditions. Uh, for example, an automobile normally designed for the normal ambient conditions. If the same is used uh, under the very sub-zero conditions, then it may not survive under those conditions. So, designing with uh, um, without proper assessment of the service conditions. So, this uh, is especially with regard to the load, temperature and environmental conditions in which component can be exposed during the service. So, if uh, this uh, uh, is not kept in uh, mind properly then it can lead to the failure and uh, the last point re related with the design is uh, here uh, that is uh, 
uh, inability to use proper design criteria for uh, uh, for uh, designing a particular mechanical component means inability to select proper design criteria which means uh, we are not actually able to appreciate the service conditions whether the failure will uh, take place due to the overload under the static conditions or failure will occur due to the impact failure will occur under the fatigue load conditions failure will occur under the creep conditions at a high temperature or failure will occur under the very low temperature conditions so what parameters we should select if that is not considered properly in selection of the suitable parameter or criteria for designing then also it can lead to the failure. So, we need to see what are the possible mechanisms by which can uh, by which failure can take place and accordingly we need to select suitable design criteria so that it can perform successfully during the service. Now, we will come to the, the first point, we uh, will uh, we'll go through, uh, we'll go through uh, the uh, things related with the stress ranges in detail and in which way it can contribute towards the failure. Thereafter, we will talk about the failures when the design is changed um, without giving full thought uh, about the various possibilities related with the service or upgrading a part uh, of the product. Uh, part uh, for more uh, se severe service conditions. So, uh, first we need to understand what are the stress raisers. Uh, stress raisers are uh, uh, we can say uh, either intentionally or unintentionally. incorporated geometrical features, geometrical features in, uh, in a uniform form cross section components. These are basically termed as stress raisers. whether sometimes uh, these are intentionally added for uh, realizing various functionalities, uh, but uh, many times these uh, happen unintentionally due to the, uh, uh, the defect formation crack development during the manufacturing or a improper uh, imper presence of imperfections in the material itself. So, uh, either intentional or unintentional. Uh, if the geometric features are present in uniform section of the material then these uh, will act as a stress razor. So, what happens when there is no stress razor? In that case like say there is a particular section having the uniform cross section, there is a particular component having the uniform cross section and it can be subjected to the bending load, torsional load or axial load. So, when axial load acts in means uh, longitudinal load, load acts in along the axis then the, the magnitude of the stress across the section will be uniform. So, like say if the load P is acting and the cross sectional area uh, uh, like say this is the thickness and uh, it has some width like this. So, this width, uh, so this width needs to be multiplied to determine the value of P. So, uh, P is the load and width into T will give us the stress which will be acting and this value of stress will actually be uniform all along this section. But if uh, any geometrical feature is introduced like say in the front view if we see the load P is acting and some geometrical feature is like this is introduced then at the location where the special geometrical feature has been introduced or it is unintentionally present then it will be leading to the localized increase of the stresses. This is called localization of stress or 
means uh, the stresses are increased in very localized manner at particular location where these are present and this localized increase in stresses uh, basically is, is termed as a stress concentration SC and it normally it is represented as a word let, like uh, KT theoretical stress concentration we will come to that subsequently. So, if we take any cross section here where there is no stress razor then the load uh, can be determined uh, the stress can be determined by simply the load divided by cross sectional area which can be simply obtained from the width into the thickness for rectangular section. But at this location where we have a stress razor so like say that the uh, this thickness is h this thick the, the depth of the, the stress razor is h. So, in that case load resisting cross sectional area will be somewhat lesser. So, the load resisting cross sectional area for this particular location will be reduced by which magnitude like say width is same, but a t minus h width will uh, so load resisting cross sectional area in this case will be reduced. So, t is the uh, this thickness and the h is the depth. So, t minus h into b that is the width of the uh, the uh, of this component. So, that will give us the reduced cross sectional area or reduced load carrying cross sectional area and which in turn will be increasing the stresses at this particular uh, location. But uh, here again the stress magnitude is not equally uh, distributed all along the length uh, all along the thickness it is more localized near the um, the near the location where stress razor is present so that localized uh, uh, increase in the uh, stress uh, uh, where stress razor is present actually becomes the cause of the failure in number of cases so uh, in the case when there is no in a material when there is no stress razor for a given load for a given cross sectional area we find the nominal stress or it is also termed as reference stress like say the sigma r we can say. So, p by a will give us simply the reference stress or the nominal stress, but when there is a stress razor in presence of a stress razor in presence of a stress razor uh, the stresses will be high. So, the maximum stress in presence of a stress razor sigma max will be load is same, but the load resisting cross sectional area has been reduced. In this case it was b into t, uh, but uh, it will be reduced to uh, a uh, actually in case of the stress razor will be uh, reduced. So, with the stress razor uh, this magnitude will be uh, equal to uh, this a s r means the area when there is a stress razor will be equal to uh, w uh, or b into t minus h because the t is the thickness and h is the depth of the stress razor. So, this will be causing the localized increase of the stress. So, so it is indicating just the, uh, the geometrical uh, dimensions of the of the stress razor and the ratio of the uh, maximum stress due to the stress razor and uh, the reference stress that is the sigma r this ratio is termed as theoretical stress concentration factor. Normally when uh, there is no stress razor uh, this uh, ratio maximum stress and reference stress both are equal. So, it is 1, but whenever there is a stress, stress, stress razor the maximum stresses will be high uh, or greater than the reference stresses and uh, then stress concentration factor will value will be uh, obviously more than 1. So, uh, we know uh, that uh, if the stress razors are present then they will cause the localized increase in the stress 
uh, and that will be termed as stress concentration. This is what we can see here in this diagram when there is no stress reserve, stresses are uniform and the stress flow lines are equally distributed. But whenever there is a, like say in this particular case when there is a hole and around the hole the stresses are more uh, stress flow lines are more localized, they are more crowded indicating that stress is more localizing and this kind of stress distribution can be seen in the third diagram where more uh, means the stress magnitude is higher uh, near the edges of the hole as compared to the, uh, the distance away from the stress reserves. So, this kind of the stress reserves are, uh, pre, uh, are invariably present in most of the engineering components to uh, realize various functionalities and that is why these are integral part of the most of the mechanical designs. But we need to take uh, care uh, of such kind of the features in such a way that uh, the stress concentration remains within the limit and they are easily accommodated without causing the failure of the component. So, what I have said earlier like the stress concentration factor can be obtained from the ratio of the maximum stress to the reference stresses and it happens uh, the stress concentration mostly happens at the locations wherever there is a change in cross section. So, like say here the cross section is uniform. So, the stress flow lines are uniformly distributed, but since at this location there is a change in cross section of a uh, change in cross section is taking place. So, here what we will see what we can see the, the, uh, the stress uh, flow lines are more localized and this is what is seen in terms of the increase in stress magnitude. Again the stress flow lines are uh, like say a distance away from uh, they are uh, more uh, uh, they are uh, by and large uniform, but uh, uh, the stress magnitude is more and we can see in this diagram here uh, in this particular location where change in cross section is taking place has caused the higher stress concentration which ultimately led to the failure of the component. So, uh, this is what has been uh, explained in this uh, slide. Uh, the same thing we can see now uh, there, there is additional aspect like the, the geometry of the stress razor. So, in this case if we see like say this is a simple plate uh, uh, of a particular uh, dimensions like say uh, there is a width V and maybe thickness T uh, that will be there. So, which uh, although has not been uh, explained here, but like say this plate is having the stress razors of the two types. One stress razor is inside and another stress razor is at the is present at the surface. So, whenever the stress razor uh, is present at the surface it is more dangerous as compared to the stress razors when they are present at in the inside. So, stress razors present at the outside its depth is taken as A and when the stress razor is present inside then its length is taken as uh, its length is taken as 2A and A is the half crack length. So, A is the full crack length when it is open for open uh, cracks and A is the half crack length when the when the crack is inside. And another uh, another feature is so the length of the crack is one of the aspects that affect the stress concentration and the second one is the crack tip radius. So, since both the cracks will have their own uh, tip where uh, the crack will be ending and that crack tip radius uh, is, uh, is a rho t. Uh, we, this is also very uh, critical and very important. Uh, like say in this plate if we have a crack here outside crack and uh, there is another crack which is present at the sides. So, that the radius at the tip that which we can see uh, like if it may be very small or if it is very tipped fine tipped then radius will be too low or it, it will be 0. So, whenever it is too small then stress concentration is very high, but when the tip is a rounded or the tip is a having radius like this then it will have somewhat lesser stress concentration. So, the tip radius is termed as rho t. So, the length of the, uh, the crack that is A or the 2A for the internal cracks uh, is used. So, A is the half crack length for internal and A is the full crack length for uh, the external crack or the surface uh, the crack exposed to the surface surface and the rho t is the, uh, the crack tip radius and for this kind of uh, situation the stress concentration or the maximum stress near the crack tip can be given through this equation like twice of uh, sigma naught or this is the sigma reference stress uh, and uh, 
uh, within the bracket here a is the crack length and rho t square root of the a divided by rho t. So, this uh, uh, how this is how we can calculate the maximum stress and if we see the stress concentration, stress concentration then uh, uh, stress concentration can be of singly uh, stress concentration factor can be obtained from the maximum stress divided by the reference stress or the nominal stress and uh, this uh, factor is coming out to be the twice of a by rho t square root. So, uh, th this uh, uh, and according to this equation if we see the stress distribution the sigma uh, naught is the nominal stress or reference stress and uh, as uh, we move from the crack tip uh, from one side crack tip to the another one uh, there is a continuous change in the stress magnitude and stress increases it reaches to the maximum stress. So, uh, the stresses are maximum. So, here uh, in, in vicinity of the crack tip stresses are high uh, and uh, uh, both side uh, uh, and the crack uh, and the stress magnitude and the both sides will be uh, too high and so it will be uh, these uh, are the locations where the crack nucleation and growth tendency will be maximum to cause the fracture. So, stress concentration is one of the most uh, very common reason for uh, the failure of the mechanical components especially if the, the proper care and the proper uh, radius uh, uh, has not been given to the stress uh, raising uh, elements or the stress raises. Now, I will summarize this presentation. In this presentation, I have talked about the gen, uh, in general what are the fundamental sources of the failure and what is the importance of the stress concentration in the uh, failure of the mechanical component. Thank you for your attention.